Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look and reviewing the Unify Next Generation Gateway Pro. The UXG Pro was in early access for about two years and has been released to the public, at least in the USA right now. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, including Unify Network Consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have affiliate links and I'll put them in the description below. So I'm going to be replacing my UDM SE with the UXG Pro, at least for a little while anyway. I'm still going to need those other controllers that are on the UDM SE to do other videos about. The UXG doesn't have any controllers locally hosted on it. So we'll either have to use a cloud key gen two plus or we'll have to use some sort of hosted solution like Hostify. You could also have the Unify network controller locally on your computer and run it off that. We'll be using Hostify to push this out to, and I'm gonna try to migrate my network controller configuration from my UDM SE to my Hostify network controller. But first, let's take a closer look at the UXG. And this is the UXG Pro. On the front, we could see the 1.3 inch touch display, and then we have our ports. So we have one one gigabit RJ45 WAN port, and then we have a 10 gigabit SFP plus WAN port. Below that, we have another RJ45 one gigabit LAN port, and then an SFP plus 10 gigabit LAN port, and then our reset button. You can see that it's matching that silver like the rest of the Unify line. On the back, we have our USB connect, which I'll be connecting to my RPS. And then we have this smart power plug, which I won't be utilizing in the UXG as my modem is quite far away from my network rack. And then we have our standard power input. There's not much more to this UXG than this, but let's see what else comes in the box. With the UXG, we get all of our mounting gear. So we get our screws, we get our rack mounts and a couple more screws for our rack ears. And we also get this power supply. One thing I do wish they added was the locking power like they have in the UDM SE as well as their USW Enterprise switches. One extra thing they added to the box was this SFP Plus DAC cable. And this is a 0.5 meter DAC cable, which I thought was great for them to add. Now that we've seen the UXG Pro, let's compare it to the UDM Pro. So for the ports on the UDM Pro, we have eight one gigabit RJ45 LAN ports, and then we have one RJ45 WAN port. We also have one 10 gigabit SFP plus WAN port and then one 10 gigabit SFP plus WAN port. On the UXG, we have two WAN ports. One's an RJ45 gigabit connection and the other is a 10 gigabit SFP plus connection. And we also have the same for our LAN. So one RJ45 one gigabit LAN port and 10 gigabit SFP plus LAN port. And our WAN does support failover and there isn't any load balancing at this time. For IDS and IPS, if we have it turned on, the throughput on the UDM Pro is 3.5 gigabits per second. For the UXG, we do have IDS and IPS, but on the website, it doesn't tell us the throughput. For the memory on the UDM Pro, we have four gigabits DDR4. And with the UXG Pro, we only have half of that at the two gigabits DDR4. And the reason behind that, I could only assume, is that there's no controllers sitting on the UXG. The processor is the same for both. It's a quad arm Cortex A57 core at 1.7 gigahertz. The supported OSs on the UDM Pro is Unify Network, Unify Protect, Unify Talk, and Unify Identity. On the UXG, we're not hosting any controllers. So like I said earlier, we're either gonna have to use a cloud key we could host it on our computer or on a server. The price for the UDM Pro is $379 USD MSRP, and the price for the UXG is $499 USD MSRP, which is quite a bit more. So now I'm gonna download a backup of my Unified Network Controller that's sitting on my UDM SE. And how you do that, we're in the old interface, and at the bottom we could see backup. We could see backup and restore, and then we're gonna download a file. Now we can see that the download is finished. I'm gonna turn off the UDM SE. I'm gonna mount the UXG Pro, and then we'll load this file into it. And hopefully all of our network configuration goes over. If not, I'm gonna to have to rebuild my network. All right, so the UXG Pro is now plugged in and this computer is connected to the RJ45 LAN port. If we go to a command line and do we type in IP config, we should be getting an address from the UXG Pro DHCP, which we are 192.168.1.229. So we need to go to 192.168.1.1. .1. 
which is the default gateway address. Okay, now it's bringing us to the Unify Next Generation Gateway Pro setup. And we could see a little diagram here what all these interfaces are for. It's currently showing that I have no internet connection. And that's correct because I have a PPPoE connection. We need to specify the username and password. So I'll click here and we'll go to configure IP settings. Under the configure IP settings, we have our connection types. DHCP is the most common, but if you have a static address or PPPoE, you could set that up here. My internet connection is only a one gigabit connection and it's plugging into the RJ45 WAN port. So that will be left at WAN1. If you're using the SFP, you're gonna use WAN2. Now I need to specify my PPPoE username and password. We need to specify DNS servers. I'll just put 1.1.1.1 and I need to use a VLAN and a VLAN ID of 35. That's what the Bell network requires for data. Under QoS tags, I'm not gonna have any on and I'll press apply changes. Okay, it looks like we're now connected to the internet. So we're starting step one. We need to give this a device name. I'm just gonna call it Mac Telecom. UXG Pro, I'm going to agree to the end user license and press next. So on step two, you could either sign in with your single sign on or you could press skip to create local credentials. I'm going to sign in with my single sign on. Now in step three, it's asking how will you manage this UXG Pro? Select the console or self hosted Unified Network application that will manage this device. I don't have any Cloud Key Gen 2s to add this device. So we're gonna go down to the bottom and we're gonna to connect to network application manually. Still on step three, now we need to give it some other options. So IP address or fully qualified domain name. So this is gonna be my Hostify server. We need to put in the username, the password, 2FA, and then local network configuration, which I'm gonna to change to 192.168.10.1, 255, 255, And then we'll have the DHCP range from 192.168.10.6 to 192.168.10.254. So I'm gonna fill in this information and then I'll press next. So the UXG didn't show up in my Hostify server. So we're gonna manually have to push it with the set inform command. The UXG switched IP addresses. So we'll have to go to the new gateway of 192.168.10.1. The username will be root and the password is UBNT. So now we need to do the set inform command. So it will be set inform space http colon slash slash the server fqdn or the ip address now i'll paste in the ip address and after that we're going to put in colon 8080 slash inform and then press enter now we can see the uxg is pending adoption in my hostify controller so i'm going to click it and then adopt it into the network controller okay so instead of a backup and restore we would have wanted to do a site migration Anyways, I just decided to rebuild my network. So I brought all of my network gear into this controller and we could see the UXG up at the top. It's giving us some traffic stats, client device types or Wi-Fi clients and most active clients. And we could also see the active clients down below and we could specify which access point we wanna see. This is nothing new. This is all a part of the Unify OS. So let's go over to my device tab. Now we can see all my devices are in the Unify network controller. And at the top, we have the Mac Telecom UXG Pro. Let's click on it. All of this stuff is gonna be the exact same, whether you're using the UXG Pro, the UDM Pro, the UDM SE, or just the base model of the UDM. We could take a look at our insights, which is going to show us our CPU and memory utilization, which this memory looks a bit high to me. So we're roughly around 70%. Under settings, we could see our different ports. At the top, we have our WAN port, and then we have our LAN port down below. And then we have our WAN, which would be the SFP plus, and then we have our LAN, which is the SFP plus. With these LAN ports, we can't put them in a lag group because one is an RJ45 one gigabit connection and the other is an SFP plus connection. But what we could do if we wanted redundant links back to our switch, we could just add two links and spanning tree protocol would take effect. And then we have the section that says outlets, which I'm not really too sure what it is, but I would assume it's that smart power plug on the back. And it says enabled or disabled and there's nothing plugged into it right now. On the left hand pane, we could see everything that we could see in the Unify OS. So we have our dashboard, we have our topology, we have our devices, we have our clients, and then we have our traffic stats and our Wi-Fi insights. We also have our traffic inspector and then we have our notifications and our settings wheel. Let's click on the settings wheel. Again, in this interface, nothing has changed because it's still the Unify OS and I'm running 
One feature they did have with the USG and the USG Pro 4, which I really liked, if they were sitting under the same controller, but on a different site, you could do an auto IPsec VTI VPN. This was a really easy way to create a site-to-site -site VPN, but with the UXG, we can't do it because it's running Unify OS. So let's go back to the old dashboard and I'll show you where that would have been. So under networks, if we created a site-to-site -site VPN, we could have selected auto IPsec VTI. And then once we click that, we would just select another site that's under this Cloud Key Gen 2 or a hosted controller, and it would automatically create that site-to-site -site VPN. This coming soon message has been sitting here since the UDM Pros have been released. I really hope they do something with it. Another feature that's missing from Unify OS in general, not just the UXG Pro, is the ability to do load balancing. On our WAN 2, currently we only could do fail over, and apparently that's supposed to be coming back into the controller. Another feature people want to see upgraded is VPNs. Right now, the only remote user VPN we could create is an L2TP, or if we're using UID, it does have a backend of OpenVPN. But according to this video by Ubiquity, the Ubiquity Insider, we are getting more VPNs. So we could see in the comment below that Ubiquity did answer. Somebody asked if they're going to be getting upgraded VPNs and we could see UID One Click VPN currently supports OpenVPN. We're making further improvements in upcoming versions. Teleport will be a simple VPN without the need of any configuration. We're also adding WireGuard support. They add WireGuard support, this is going to be amazing. So that's pretty much it for my UXG review and setup video. Well, if you're planning on deploying a lot of access points, you're going to need to go up to the UXG Pro. We could see that it could handle up to 500 access points, and that's using some sort of hosted controller. In that same Ubiquity Insider video, they did say something about a cloud controller that is coming to Ubiquity, but I believe that's still in early access, and I haven't seen any pricing on that. I would assume it's a monthly pricing structure. Now, am I going to keep the UXG Pro in place? Probably not. I'm going to switch back to my UDM SE as it has more features to it. And in my house, I'm going to be using Unify Access, Unify Talk, UID to do future videos. If you really need the ability to add more access points, the UXG Pro is great for you. And this is also done either on a locally hosted controller, on a Cloud Key Gen 2, or on your own server. But if we're doing the UXG Pro and the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, you're looking at about $700 USD plus tax, which gets fairly expensive when you could buy a UDM SE for $499. So it all really depends on the use case you need it for. If you have any questions about the Unify UXG Pro, leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.